excellent source of this key nutrient in a great tasting gummy, new from Flintstones. Why is Roman meal bread nutritious? It has added whole grains and fiber, plus vitamin D and calcium. Roman meal bread, natural whole grain goodness since 1912. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. For a free rate quote, visit GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Closed captioning, sponsored by... Well, are you going to pick it or not? It's not ready yet. Every smucker learns to wait for fruit to reach the peak of perfection to make extra delicious jam. With a name like Smucker's, it has to be good. The demand for automotive technicians has never been greater. Let New England Tech be the first step to a rewarding career with high earning potential. Earn your degree in automotive technology, auto body technology, high performance technology, or automotive management. Classes are enrolling now. Call today at 467-7744. That's 467-7744. New England Tech, America's automotive college. Monday, September 19th, dancing is back with the most surprising cast ever. I'm sexy and I know it. The King of Scream, Daytime's Darling, the NBA Champion, the Italian Beauty, Soccer Superstar, Soap's Real Life Hero, Reality Sweetheart, the Pop Princess, the Prince of Reality, the Courtroom Queen, the Fashion Guru, and the Most Unexpected. I'm sexy and I know it. Dancing with the Stars live to our premiere event, Monday, September 19th on ABC. ABC 6 News, now in high definition. Good evening, I'm Karen Myers. And I'm John DeLuca. You may notice our new clear, crisp look. Thank you for joining us for our first broadcast in full high definition. Tonight, a Cranston man vying for a coaching position at a local high school has just blown any chance of getting the job. He's accused of lying to cover up his checkered past. ABC 6's Abby Nesgoda breaks it down in tonight's top story. A man with a felony criminal record wanted to get a job at this high school so badly that he did whatever it took, even if it meant sending fake letters from the FBI. Police say 53-year-old Frank Nolan had applied to be the assistant girls volleyball coach here at Johnson High School. He'd been showing up to the games and practices since the summer, but Nolan knew the required criminal background check would bring up a history that would take him out of the running. That history includes a case just last year when he was charged with obtaining money under false pretenses at St. Kevin Catholic School in Warwick. So police say Frank Nolan took matters into his own hands, first sending an email to the school claiming to be an FBI agent. It said his record was clean, but the complete report couldn't get through. Thinking that might not be enough, Nolan sent a fake letter in the mail saying he had no criminal record. Police say it wasn't long before school officials caught on. By all means, it, it was amateur. Um, the, 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 there was a, the document lacked any type of official letterhead. It, it lacked a signature. It, it lacked official stamps. Um, so anybody who's, who's familiar with what a background check should look like can tell just on the face that it was a, a fraudulent document. 
Detectives say the lying continued even after the letters. Once Nolan sensed the police were on to him, he started telling the team he wasn't able to work because he had bone cancer. He's now at the Adult Correctional Institute and expected back in court on September 21st. In Johnston, I'm Abby Nesgoda, ABC6 News. A late night fire in Providence has been ruled arson. Investigators say someone set fire to a mattress in the back of a vacant home on Matton Avenue in the Olneyville section of the city. The flames spread up the vinyl siding. Witnesses tell police they saw two teens running from the boarded up building. At least two firefighters were slightly hurt. If your phone line didn't work today, you were not alone. A weekend fire at a Cox communication station in Warwick destroyed a fiber optic line knocking out phone and television service to homes and businesses across the state. Even police departments lost phone service, but tonight we're told service is back up and running. Help is on the way for communities hit hard by Tropical Storm Irene. Rhode Island Emergency Management is holding three sessions this week to teach state agencies how to get FEMA to reimburse them for money they spent before, during, and after the storm. The first meeting is tomorrow at the University of Rhode Island. It gets underway at 9.30 in the morning. For information on the other meetings, go to our website, abc6.com. It appears an investigation into National Grid's response time during and after the storm may not be enough for the town of Rentham. Town leaders are considering breaking away from the electric company and starting their own electric company. And we are following developing news in Afghanistan. A barrage of rockets and gunfire rained down on the U.S. Embassy and NATO headquarters in Kabul today. It is the worst attack in the region since the American Embassy opened nine years ago. As ABC's Nick Schifrin reports, the Taliban is claiming responsibility. This was one of the worst security breaches that Kabul has ever seen. Militants took over a construction site less than 1,000 feet from the U.S. Embassy and NATO's main military headquarters. They shot rocket-propelled grenades and automatic weapons at the embassy and the military base. The attack lasted for hours, and throughout, Kabul was in chaos. At one point, embassy staff were put under duck-and-cover orders, meaning they actually had to hide under shelters that protected them from incoming fire. Now, the military response took hours. At one point, Afghan helicopters came in, hovered over the site, and shot down onto the militants. Opposition, uh, violent extremists, the Taliban and their allies uh, engage in a constant uh, effort to threaten and to undermine uh, the peace and progress of the Afghan people. Uh, so we will be uh, vigilant, but we will be continuing with even greater commitment. Uh. That site is just outside the U.S. Embassy security cordon. But make no mistake, it is one of the most secure points in all of Afghanistan. And there will be a lot of questions today about how militants carrying rocket-propelled grenades were able to get so close, apparently so easily. Nick Schifrin, ABC News, Islamabad. Two American hikers imprisoned in Iran for two years could soon be released. Iran's president pledged to pardon Shane Bauer and Josh Fatal. They were convicted of spy-related charges after straying across the Iran-Iraq border with another hiker, Sarah Shord. Shord was released last year after the payment of a half-million-dollar bail. A hiker's lawyer says similar bail has been set for them. A multi-state drug ring has been busted. And get this, those under arrest include a state trooper, a cop, and three TSA agents. Prosecutors say they were helping transport oxycodone from Florida to the East Coast. The TSA agents, who were at airports in Florida and New York, along with a Florida trooper and police officer, got cash payments to help move the highly addictive painkillers. Just another gorgeous day in southeastern New England. Nice and warm out there, feeling more like late summer than early fall, although we do have some early fall weather in the forecast. Let's check out the temperatures right now, ranging from the mid-70s out on the Cape to around 80 degrees right now in the Providence metro area and still in the low 80s uh, well to our west. Willimantic 81 in Hartford right now at 83 degrees. A little gusty breeze out there at 17 miles per hour right now in Providence coming in out of the southwest. Somewhat of a muggy afternoon and early evening for us. 15 miles per hour in New Bedford. The wind is gusting about 15 to 25 just about everywhere and uh, there's not much going on as far as clouds are concerned so things are going to stay very quiet right into this evening and our first forecast as the temperature 
after at 8 o'clock down to about 71 degrees under mainly clear skies. By 11 o'clock, 67 with mainly clear skies. A lot like we saw uh, last night. We should see some fog developing by dawn tomorrow. I'll let you know when that will burn off tomorrow and give you the latest on the cool shot heading our way coming up in a few. All right, thank you, Fred. A local florist in business for almost 100 years is forced to close up shop. And headline-grabbing baseball star Manny Ramirez is making news for the wrong reason. Manny in trouble again. And there's no other way to put it. The Pats are unstoppable. You're watching ABC6 News at 5 with John DeLuca. Karen Myers, Chief Storm Tracker Meteorologist Fred Campagna, and Sports with Ken Bell. This is ABC 6 News at 5.